All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is the four, uh, This is the last week of the class, and what we are going to do is uh, work on uh, a little bit more uh, coding the project. We're going to have this week what I have. What we should have in store is the uh, working a bit more on the aesthetics of the project, filling in some of the, <coughs> the details, and then an introduction to JSON. JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, because JSON is going to be the concept that we're going to use uh, extensively for the database. Now, JSON is a big, uh, big topic, but we have a couple of lectures on it, and then the the um, the database and all of that, and then we get into month three, which is uh, adding more advanced features of the project, actually publishing it. So, in its totality, we will create a final signed APK. We will become official app developers with our own signing certificate. Then we're going to create an app store account and publish it and beta test it and all of that, and that's next month. But for this month, what I want to do is, um, the way you should have set yourself up is with your virtual or real device. And on my flash drive, in my apps folder, I took last week's work, 317, I made a copy and I put today's date, and that's what I'm working on. So if you look in your net in the network folder, you will not see 322. I haven't put in my temp version yet. You will see 317. So if you want a copy of my work from last week, get 317, and I put today's date on it, and then we'll work with it. <coughs> so I am going to quickly open just to remind you, we've been looking at it over and over, of course, but I'm just going to very quickly open the index file in the web browser without any special things. I just want to open it up to remind you where we're at with the, with the project visually as well as functionality-wise. Functionality-wise, we have all of this stuff working of screens and stuff and panels and external content, and we need to fill in some of these details here and there. We can get to that later. But what I want to focus on today is really the aesthetics of the project, because um, we've been using it with this basic built-in design of a very boring gray. Dark gray, light gray, and another kind of gray, and a little blue, I guess. So very basic colors. I want to address that, how to customize the project to your own you know, color design. And I also then want to talk about customizing the fonts. Right now it's got some basic built-in font, um, and it's fine, it's very simple, but maybe I want to put more interesting fonts, use a more interesting text for the project. So that's what we'll be talking about today, the aesthetics of the project. And um, we'll start off with first working with the colors of the project. Let's, uh, let's do this. Um, let's uh, go back into, let's go into Notepad and open the index file. Let's edit Notepad++, the index.html file. And we saw this a long time ago. Uh, <coughs> So you might remember it, or it might be brand new if you forgot it, but we can um, change the design of our project in a very cool way in that we can set up sort of like color palettes and activate them whenever we need. And so right now we're using the default color palette, this gray one. We have another built-in one which we can activate very easily, and we can add up to 26 color palettes. So that means different colors uh, and, and sizes and fonts and all of that per screen if we want. <coughs> to see this, let's go to line 15. This is where our section, our home section starts. We've got the data roll of page and the ID of home. Let's add a new data element. So I want to add before ID, because remember I like to keep ID in class the very last attribute of any element. So right after data role, let's add data-theme. Data-theme equals B. 
simply the letter B. We don't need to get very complex and run it in the browser or run it in, in, in the emulator or anything. Just go up here from Notepad, save it, and go up to Run Firefox. We'll do a very quick browser launch. You know, not, not an actual app launch yet, just a quick browser launch. And the result should be this. So very easily right here we change the, the whole design of the project. There are two built-in palettes, color schemes, A and B. Now if you go to art, we never told the art screen to become theme B, so it's still theme A. And any screen is still theme A, ex except, you know, the first screen because we've set that to, to theme B. We've only specified theme B on the home screen. Theme A is the default. So what we're going to do is redefine the look. We can do a couple of things. We're going to redefine the look of theme A. I want all my pages to change. I'm going to choose yellows and blues and gradients and all these cool things. And I want those new colors to apply throughout my whole project. Well, every single screen automatically gets theme A. So we're going to redefine the look of theme A. What we could do is also create further color palettes. We could define a B, a C, D, all the way up to Z, to Z if we want. And uh, that way we can just simply apply data theme whenever we want. And we've applied it here to the section, so everything in this screen, every element in the screen inherits <coughs> theme B. But depending on the element, we can also apply a theme B or C or D or whatever just to the element. It might look a little weird, but let's see what this looks like. I'm going to go back to line 16, header, data role header, data position fixed, data theme A. Let me try it before you do. I don't think it might do anything that interesting. But just to see, well, there you go. So the, the header goes back to theme A, and the rest of the design is theme B. So I can apply the data themes to individual elements. Um, and that's just for further customization. I might have 26 palettes to choose from, but if that's not enough, I can mix and match them. So I'm going to put my code back the way it was. I'll just undo that. I don't need that data theme just at the moment. I'm just showing you that we can customize, we can specialize a data theme per any element. And data themes are CSS. And so if we define some CSS, we will be able to customize our project. <coughs> and honestly, that's a little complex because jQuery Mobile is a very powerful starting point. It has all of these definitions of icons and colors and positions and sizes and all of that. And so to simply edit the colors of things, it's a little complex because we have some element from object inside of another object inside of another one. And therefore we think we're changing the color of the text down there. And it doesn't change because that element is in another element which is overriding it. The good news is that we can use um, this tool from the good folks at uh, jQueryMobile.com to easily create our themes, our color swatches. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's go to your web browser and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. Remember jQueryMobile.com is where we look up the documentation for how jQuery works and all of that. But they've also got a great thing here under themes. So go to jQueryMobile.com and on this top menu select themes. Themes. That'll take you to themeroller.jQueryMobile.com. Welcome to jQuery... Uh, welcome to Theme Roller for jQuery Mobile. Create up to 26 theme swatches, letter from A to Z, each with a unique color scheme, then mix and match. So let's click Get Rolling. Here you've got three A, B, C. Theme A, Theme B, Theme C. And you've got the, this blank canvas to start out with. The basic jQuery 1.4.5. If you're using an older version of jQuery, you have to design your theme palettes in this other version. You don't have to care about that if you're new to the class because we're using the most current one. 
But here then you've got undo, redo, inspector, download, import. We'll, we'll look at all of this stuff. But here's what's so cool about this. Here's a design. I'm tired of the plain old basic gray top. What if I drag a color from up here to right here? Ooh, now I'm going to have red in these elements of my design. You can drag and drop various colors in various parts of the design. Behind the scenes, it's going to be CSS. I'll show you how to apply it, of course. But let's explore what this is. This is Theme Roller. It's free. It's from jQueryMobile.com. It's a quick way to make, you know, color color choices. Just drag and drop on most elements. You can do that. Some that you think that you can, you might not be able to, like I'm dragging it onto those icons and it doesn't seem to change color, but we've also got the ability to change elements here on the left. <coughs> so as you drag these colors over, you are seeing these elements open up. I just dragged something in and it says you've edited the body. Text color, text shadow, background, border. That's the color that I dropped in right there, background. So I've got some colors at the top but I'm free to also change colors here on the left. Let's try this. Let's say we, we open on the left side body. Open the body editor. Click background, that little swatch there. And it pops open for you to choose a color so I can choose various colors. If your color isn't changing, you know, if it keeps staying white, even though I'm changing it to all of these colors, the reason it doesn't change is because this sort of color picker has the hue on the outside, which is the color. Green, <coughs> red, blue. It has the hue on the outside wheel. And then the tints and the shades on the inside. Right now, whatever color I've chosen is pure white. So even if I'm going around this whole wheel and I'm trying to select red, it's not applying it red because the inside tint and hue is pure white. If I, as I move that around in here, then I get the actual color that I'm looking for. So that always confuses people. You choose the basic color around the ring, and you choose how strong it is on the, on the square, how much white, how much black. Tints and shades. So I'm able to edit all aspects. There's a very subtle text shadow applied to my text. You can kind of see it in my projector right there. It's not an artifact of the screen. There is a one pixel text shadow right there that is gray. I can make it obvious by typing in something big like 11. And then you see a drop shadow there. And the default is 1. It's a sort of a gray, but then I can put black, and that's how that looks. I don't want any shadow on my body text. Zero. There is a little built-in one pixel shadow there. Uh, there's a border. Where's that border? That border seems to be around this element here. So we might not be the best artists, but here we have the ability to customize the color of our project. So I'll go around to see what else is on this editor. Once we've got a, a cool color design, then we'll download it and apply it to our project. Um, so notice to the whole page itself we can add colors just to the headers or footers. Right now they're linked together. Maybe I want a certain color for the header, a certain color for the footer. We can do that, but right now whatever color I choose here is linked together. Colors of links, which is just basic text links. Basic text links. <coughs> On the plus symbol there, I can add a color to, if it's an active link that I have not clicked yet, What's the color of the link if I hover my mouse over, which is, does not apply when it's an app on an actual device. There's no hover on a device, there's just tap. Link active is the moment when you click the link before it goes to the next screen. It flashes a certain color for a moment. 
and link visited is that you click the link once before when you come back to it, <coughs> it's now sort of a used color, a visited color. For your buttons, here's where you edit those buttons. So in this case, it didn't quite work for me to drag a color into the into the button. It added it to the to the header. To edit those buttons, the button normal hover again. There's no hover in the uh, on mobile devices, but it will make it a plain gray if you don't address the button hover there. Button press. What's the color at the moment that you press it? Click on it. How were you able to change the icon color? You should see on the left side here there's the button for normal, or for hover, and for press. Thank you. Active state. Active state is the color right here. So you recall on our on our project we've got the nav bar at the top and there are buttons that we click on at the nav bar and they are in an active state. If I'm on the home screen the home button is active. If I'm on the PC screen the PC button is active. This is where you would edit that under active state. So here I'm just kind of choosing some random colors. Again, this is an aspect of things that not everyone has an aptitude for or desire for. Maybe I would care more about the programming aspect of it all. That's what I think I'm good at. This is also an aspect to, to think about because your app by default will be plain old basic gray. And so you should add some design to it. That's why today we're talking about the design color-wise and then also uh, font-wise and maybe we'll also, we'll probably have time also to talk about custom icons. We've got the 50 built-in ones, but what about my own icon? We'll talk about that too, most likely. So um, here, let's say I'm, I've kind of worked at all of this and I'm making a big mess. Um, what you can do is, you don't have to do this, but what I'm going to do is just reset. Reset the screen and then that uh, takes you back to before any changes. This, uh, we'll get to it soon, but this that we're creating has a has a unique color palette, and if I want to continue to edit it, I um, can save it to use for later purposes. We'll get to that, but uh, what I want to show is, okay, as I'm saying, you might not have the most uh, savvy eye for design and such. At the top, or near the top, it says, drag a color onto an element, and then next to it, it says, Adobe Cooler Swatches cooler or cooler, however you like to say it, is a, is a collection of swatches that people design that are good color choices. And so if you, if you do click on that, cooler swatches, it'll say, okay, here's the newest one. Someone created the gold palette, and notice it's got these ones. And this is a thing where designers all over the world contribute and then rank them and rate them and all of that. So these are the newest ones. I can go with popular. What, are, what do people say are popular? I select that. I've got four pages. Sunshine over. I can search. I can get randoms. Highest rated. So the point of this, how do you use this, is let's say, oh, look at this. This is the Facebook color palette. The way I would use that is I would click on each of those colors to load them into my color well on the side over here, recent colors. I would click on each of them, and it would be nicer that they all get imported. But basically, I'm clicking each of the colors that I want. So I've loaded the Facebook color palette into my recent colors right there. Now I can use it in my app. So I'm going to drag this color over here, and I'm going to put this gray color back here, maybe here. Etc. So look at that. It looks like Facebook. So you can use the cooler color swatches to, 
to do this. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you maybe two minutes, three minutes or so. You pick a color palette. I would recommend you've got three of them here. Pick three color palettes. That way we can quickly change the design of our site pretty easily simply with data theme A, B, or C. So let's take a moment to do that. Don't refresh and don't navigate away because we need to figure out how to save this and all of that. And we'll do it together in just a moment. Um, I guess what I'll say is, so that you don't lose this accidentally, we'll set it all up and download it. But take a look at this on the top right corner, Share. If you click Share, that is, the, that is your unique link to this color palette. <coughs> What I, was, what I would say as you're working, I would click on that share button and copy that link somewhere. I'm going to copy it over here to one of an empty notepad file. That's a link back to my current color palette. So I can come back to it, further refine it if my screen refreshes. Hopefully I save that. And notice, however, we can only store this theme, color URL theme, for 30 days. Then it will be deleted. So download a copy of it. You know, I don't know why they delete it. It's just you know, basic text data. I'm sure they could store everyone's colors here indefinitely. But let's take a moment to do this. Uh, save your share color, sh your share link on the top, so you don't lose your colors. And take a moment to design palettes A, B, C. And we're going to go on in just a moment to uh, apply this to our site. Any questions so far? Did everyone get the sign-in sheet?
summary. Let's uh, wrap up in about 30 seconds, and then we'll see what we can do with or how we apply these colors. All right, so I've got three color palettes here, A, B, C. I want to see how can I uh, use these uh, on my actual project. So if you look at the top right corner, you have a button that says Download, Download Zip File. So click on that, and then it shows you a big old screen. And what we've got here says Download Theme. This will generate a zip file for compressed and uncompressed versions production ready and uncompressed for editing. So this is uh, the minified versions or the unminified. Uh, to use it, add it together with the icon CSS file to the head of your page before jQuery Mobile structure like this. Now this is assuming if you look at the code, this looks familiar. Document type, type etc., UTF, viewport, and we see style sheet and it's pointing to jQuery mobile. Um, on this particular one, it's using jQuery mobile structure, then jQuery, and then jQuery JS. They're using the basic jQuery mobile structure file, which is not the one we're using. We're using the one that is more than just the structure. That structure file is like a basic skeleton. It doesn't have a lot of definition on how the design actually looks. We're using the one that is an actual design. So for us, make a note, it's asking us to add these lines of code, but for us, we are going to add them after the jQuery mobile CSS file. Here it's telling us add it before the structure, but we're not using structure. So for us, we're going to add our code afterward. We'll see how in a moment. But it's saying download it, put it somewhere in your, in your project, and then connect to the files that it gives us, which are uh, whichever it gives us, we need to connect to them. At the top right corner, before we actually download it, at the top right corner, we need to give this a name. This is going to give us my custom theme.css. If we type up there, my custom theme. So we can call this anything we want. I'm going to call it uh, my colors. So our code, we'll see in a moment, is going to be blah, 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 mycolors.css. Whatever we type up there is what we need to type on this line. We'll see. So call this whatever you want. I'm using my colors. Click download zip. It's asking me to save it or open it. I will save it. And this probably ended up on your desktop, so if you're in Firefox, click the download arrow up there, top right, and click on the folder. That will take you to the folder where it downloaded. If you're in Chrome, you probably saw an arrow on the bottom left. Click on the arrow on the bottom left to open the location. And then so what I've got on my desktop is this, jQuery mobile theme. That's, that's my theme, all, all the colors. I've got a copy of it now. You want to make sure you save that somewhere. I'm going to save it on my flash drive, and I'll put a copy of it in the network folder in case you want my colors. <coughs> in case you want my colors. And so... What we do with this question? Where would the explorer put that file? Probably also on the desktop. So you can minimize and go to the desktop. So once you've downloaded it, you want to then right-click it and select Extract All. So let that extract. We need this extracted. Don't just double-click the zip file. You want to right-click it to extract it. 
go ahead and let it extract. <clears throat> Once you extract it, you get an index file, and if you take a quick look at the index file, it gives you the same instructions as the website. It shows you it worked, and then a, a, a preview of what it looks like. So it's got the A theme by default. And then it tells you you've got to add some code to your, to your pages. It's just a simple reference to a style sheet. Where you put it, again for us, we're going to put it after our, our JavaScript code, not before it like it's recommending here. But what's actually there is inside of the themes folder that has images, jQuery, mobile icon, min CSS, my color CSS, and my colors min CSS. So what this includes are the various icons that make this work and if we have customized the colors of our icons that's there uh, in all of these files. This is the uncompressed version. This is the one that I can still easily edit. This is the one that I can, uh, so the one that's mycolors.css, that's the one that I can right click, edit with notepad, and then it will look like an editable thing. It's got 747 lines of CSS code, but every single thing is here with comments and structure and all of that so that I can browse my code and make further changes. And it's got the min CSS version, which is the minified one, the, the compressed one, the one ready to, to go into our project. And so the thing about this is that it might be a little cumbersome for you to make future changes. If um, you did not keep the uncompressed version, then to deal with the compressed version, look at how difficult this is with the min CSS one. Well, it's only 216 lines because the very last line goes on and on and on and on and on <laughs> for some reason. So it looks uncompressed, but then it's all there at the bottom. So my point here is you can connect the CSS, the uncompressed version, to your site, and if you need to make color changes later, you can just edit the uncompressed one. Because it's uncompressed, however, it takes up 26 kilobytes, not so bad, and the compressed one is 19, which is a little smaller, 7K. And in the grand scheme of it, that's not a lot, but if you have a very complex theme, what if you did choose all 26 color palettes, then your, then your uncompressed one is even larger. Now, we, before we go further with it, if we look at the jQuery mobile site, we've also got import. So you can re-import your project. Let's say, whoops, I went away from the site, or I came back a month later, and okay, it's empty. Just to show you this, you don't have to do it, but if I do import, it's going to ask you to copy and paste the contents of any uncompressed jQuery mobile theme file here to edit it. So it's still going to ask you for the uncompressed version. So if I did then open up the uncompressed version and paste it back in, I can go back to editing it. Import that, and it brought it back. Then I can further edit it with the nice WYSIWYG editor, and then re-download it and re-import re it. All right, so we actually need to use this thing, not just talk about it. So here's how we'll use it. Let's uh, easiest way is let's copy the whole themes folder into our project folder. So I've got my project folder on the right side. Uh, 
I've got my project folder on the right side. I'm in the www folder. And I'm going to drag that whole folder that says themes. That was what was in my zip file. I'm going to drag it to copy it into my project. And so I need to link these two CSS files on all of the pages that I want the colors to be used, which is index and map.html. So just some simple CSS files that I need to link. Let's go back to Notepad and let's edit the index file. And so in the head section, uh, line 10, we've got our link to our jQuery mobile CSS file, our unique Kodika code. We have to decide where to add this. I'm going to add this between the basic jQuery mobile design and my unique code, because I still want my code to override the theme roller code, just in case. So between there, add a new line 11, and we're going to type link, the link tag, which is a single tag, self-closing. And we're going to type rel, the relationship of this link, this linked file to this current file is that it's a style sheet href. We're going to point over to the two files that, that it gave us in the theme folder. In the theme folder I've got one called jQuery mobile icons min.css. Notice how very speci especially it's spelled. I'm just going to copy and paste its name. Don't forget the CSS. .css. So here I'm bringing in the, the design attributes of my icons. Maybe to save some effort, I'm going to copy line 11 and paste it to line 12. And then I just need to set my href to my file that I forgot what I called, mycolors.css. Dot min dot CSS. The minified version, the compressed version. And that should be all we need. The hard part was designing it <coughs> and then adding the code, which is easy. It's just a link to a CS a couple CSS files. Question? In the folder. Where? Team. Very good. That's what I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. That code there would work if uh, that, that CSS were on the root level, wouldn't it? We have these two CSS files in a subfolder. I said copy the whole themes folder, didn't I? So our index file is not going to find those CSS files because they're in the themes folder. We need to remember that. Very easy to forget, obviously. So actually our code should be, line 11, themes, is it theme or themes? Themes. Themes. Slash. And then the CSS file. And the same thing for the my colors. They're in a subfolder, so we need the full path. Yes? So you told us that you didn't have the structures that part of this, right? Mm -hmm. And is that because not exactly. We still need to create that kind of structure in HTML, you know, defining our article and our section and all that. jQuery cannot do that for us. What the basic structure is, is sort of like, in a sense, it's giving us the materials to build something, but it doesn't really build anything. The regular jQuery mobile file that we have here gives us the materials and it builds the, it builds the structure. We still have to add in the proper tags and such, but the other one is like, here's the paint, go paint a house. And this one is, here's a paint, go paint this house. It's already something to work with. That's why it's telling us in the theme roller, put it before your structure, because it's absolutely nothing really in the structure, and we're going to add our own basics to it. 
All right, so I think this is enough here. Let's see. I'm just going to take a quick look in the browser. Run Firefox. There we go. No longer basic. Uh, it's no longer my basic built-in colors. Now I'm building the next great American Facebook app. And then notice all of the all of the pages have my colors because I applied those to. I, I did that to the theme A. Theme B and C are still lurking there, which I can use. Yes? How do you have a reference to Copica style? This is our own custom CSS file. If we want to further refine things, like I'm seeing here, that white text is hard to read. I could go to my codica.external.css file and write my own custom code to override anything else. But you downloaded that. Is that correct? You didn't create that. That one came with the Codica Builder from last month. So it automatically gave us a codica.external.css. And down at the bottom, we've also got codica.external JavaScript right here. So those are just two sort of placeholder files that Codica gave us so we can write our own further custom CSS or JavaScript code. So when I actually applied this to my site, I like it overall, but I am seeing that, that it's a little hard to read here, uh, that white text on that blue background. So I have a couple of ways to handle this. And so notice there, it's even a little harder to read there. Again, I've got a couple of ways to handle this. Um, I could further write more custom code and add it into the codica.css file. I could instead edit the actual Codica code here. Now remember the cumbersome aspect of this. I have linked to the min file. I'm going to have a little hard time parsing it and browsing it to find what I need to edit in there. I've got the unminified version right there, but that's not the one that's linked. So honestly, there's no very easy way to fix this. I kind of like the way, which is really roundabout, but I'm, I like doing it this way. I like the way to go back to Theme Roller and edit it that way and download it again and put it in the folder again. That is, you know, several different steps. That's the way that I like, just because I know that I'm editing what I think I'm editing, and it's more visual that way. <clears throat> and so what happened is I did close the... I did close completely the theme roller, but not before saving the link to my code, to my design. So I can go back to the theme roller editor here. And it looks fine here, but I okay, there's there it is right there. That's the white on very light blue that I'm seeing there represented here. So the reason I like to take it back here is then to further refine it visually here and then download it. Yeah, so I'm seeing those two colors that are not working, so I just need to figure out where to do it here. No, you would have to do data theme equals C, and then we, we know there that that only applies to one screen. So now theme C is my new cool design, and then the rest are still back to A. So there's no quick way to make that, to swap them out really, um, except you can kind of do this. What if you manually add data theme C, add data theme A, you, you actually write it out. You write data theme A on all your sections. The default is A, but we explicitly say data theme A. Then, in future times, when we want to swap out those colors, we go to replace, and in the instances with data theme A, 
you just change it to C because there is a placeholder there to latch on to. But that, again, requires that you manually set the theme A throughout your whole project the first time. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to take a quick moment to uh, tweak a little bit of this color here. I'm seeing you know, the button pressed color is a little hard to read, so what if I make that darker text? All right, so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it, but this is easily, obviously, something that you could do. I haven't tested themes B and C. Uh, I might want to if this were a real, real app. But what I simply wanted to do here was redo my colors, so I'm going to have to go again to the download. Um, it asked me a theme name again, but I need to set the same one just so that it's easier for me to incorporate, which I called my colors. So I'm going to say, okay, download that one again. So I've got my updated color version. So I've got my updated colors here, and all I then need to do is replace the the one that already exists because the uh, the names are the same. Again, this is a roundabout way, but if if it makes sense to you, I would do it. Uh, so I'm just replacing my new ones here using my new ones. So are you sure you want to replace? Yes, this is my newer version. I don't have to edit anything in the code. And so there it is there. There's before, there's after. Here's my original color choices. And uh, here it is with a few with a few tweaks. It's much more readable. All right, so any questions so far? Uh, here we've dealt with, with uh, editing our colors, so uh, if it worked here in the quick browser view, you should then uh, build it in Taco and then run it in your, uh, on your device, real or virtual, just to make sure that's all running. So I'm going to start that, but we're going to take a break because 
we'll take a break and then after that we will um, we will uh, deal with fonts. So I'm going to put a copy of my code in the network <laughs> folder and then I'm going to build it so that it runs on my device and then we'll continue and we'll work with fonts. 7.05, we'll be back at 7.10. 7.15.